Good morning. Okay, so we are going to be in Jeremiah 28 and 29 because today is the 16th. Yes, it is. I feel like I was there yesterday. It feels like we've been in Jeremiah a very long time. It feels like you're just a little close. Let me scoot you back just a little bit. There we go. Fix the tripod. Okay. 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 Jeremiah 28, 29. Let's go ahead and pray. Lord, I just thank you for this day. I thank you for your word. Thank you that we can come before you each and every day, that you love us, that you care about us, and that your mercy is new every morning. You're never tired or or surprised by what we've done, and, and you love us just the same, and, and you love us enough to not leave us the way we are. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for all that you've given us. Thank you for all that you are, and thank you for all that you provide. And Lord, we just ask that you would help us to be thankful this day. Help me to be thankful this day. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Praying for a home for my current foster therapy dog. So for those of you that don't know, I rescue um, from the local animal shelter and then I behavior test them to see if they will be fit for service or therapy. And if they are, then I foster them. And I train them for either service or therapy. Well, I have a current candidate that is in need of a home. He is a therapy dog. He's accumulated uh, enough hours to be labeled an AKC therapy dog novice. So oh, just God only could do something like that. And so just looking for a home for him. So keep me in prayer because I definitely need him to be placed to wherever he needs to go because I have another candidate coming in today. So God knows and God's going to take care of it. So just uh, prayers for for me to be patient, not go before God, and for me to trust that God's going to do what he says he's going to do because I know he's going to meet the need. So thank you, God. There you go. Okay, Jeremiah 28 and 29. Hananiah the false prophet. Now, the prophets were supposed to be the mouthpieces of God. God would talk to the prophet and give them a word, and then they would go to the people and give them what God had said. Well, Jeremiah is a prophet currently that we're reading about, and he tells us what God's word is. Well, Hananiah evidently was not a prophet, and so he's called a false prophet, which means that they don't give what God's word is, they kind of give whatever is popular, whatever suits them, whatever is a benefit to them. So here we go. In the same <clears throat> coffee pot. In that same year, at the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah, king of Judah, in the fifth month of the fourth year, Hananiah, the son of Azor, the prophet from Gibeon, spoke to me in the house of the Lord in the presence of the priests and all the people, saying... Good morning, Nika. What are you doing up so early? Wow, girl. Going to be doing nails real early in the morning, huh? Okay. So we are in Jeremiah 28, verse 2. Uh, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, I have broken the yoke of the king of Babylon. Within two years, I will bring back to this place all the vessels of the Lord's house, which Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, took away from this place and carried to Babylon. I will also bring back to this place Jeconiah, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, and all the exiles from Judah who went to Babylon. Oh, getting ready for school. Fantastic. I'm so proud of you. You're doing an amazing job in school, Nika. I love you so much, honey. Um, verse 4. I will also bring back to this place Jeconiah, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, and all the exiles from Judah who went to Babylon, declares the Lord. For I will break the yoke of the king of Babylon. Now, Yesterday, we heard how the king of Babylon was God's servant, but now God's saying how he's going to break the yoke of the king of Babylon. So God puts people in positions for a season and then removes them from their place of position of authority for a season because God is God and we are not. And we can't understand or explain why God does what he does. He just does. So verse 5. Then the prophet Jeremiah spoke to Hananiah the prophet in the presence of the priests and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. And the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord make the words that you have prophesied come true and bring back to this place from Babylon the vessels of the house of the Lord and all the exiles. Yet 
Hear now this word that I speak in your hearing and in the hearing of all the people. The prophets who preceded you and me from ancient times prophesied war, famine, and pestilence against many countries and great kingdoms. As for the prophet who prophesies peace, when the word of that prophet comes to pass, then it will be known that the Lord has truly sent the prophet. Okay, so now, now this is like prophet wars. So Hananiah is spitting his game and everybody is like, oh, we're going to, everything will be okay. And Jeremiah is like, not really. And he's saying, this is really what God is saying. And this is really what God has predicted. And, you know, when the prophet comes saying, peace, 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 that's when you need to know that everything is going to happen the way he said it was because he's not right. Well, then the prophet Hananiah took the yoke bars from the neck of Jeremiah, the prophet, and broke them. So now this this is just getting worse and worse. You know, like when they, they're rapping against you, know, rap of wars, and, and they're like, they're, they're spitting their game, and they're spitting their game, and they're all talking against each other. And so that's what's happening here. They're, they're going against each other, and Hananiah really, I think, possibly believes he's right with God. I don't know. So sometime after the prophet Hananiah had broken the yoke bars from off the neck of Jeremiah the prophet, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, go tell Hananiah, thus says the Lord, you have broken wooden bars, but you have made in their place bars of iron. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, I have put upon the neck of all these nations an iron yoke to serve Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. And they shall serve him. For I have given to him even the beasts of the field. And Jeremiah the prophet said to the prophet Hananiah, Listen, Hananiah, the Lord has not sent you. Period. Point blank. I'm not going to mince words like, you're wrong. And you have made this people trust in a lie, which is humongous. Because it's one thing to lead yourself astray. But if you're going to lead people astray... That's a whole different ball of wax. There, there's a whole other level of not okayness when you lead other people astray. So therefore, thus says the Lord, behold, I will remove you from the face of the earth this year. You shall die because you have uttered rebellion against the Lord. I, I wouldn't want anyone to give me that word. And so... In that same year, here you go, so you know which prophet won the war, won the battle of words. In the seventh month, the prophet Hananiah died. Don't go against God's people. Don't, don't speak lies about what God's saying. Don't do it. Don't do it. Jeremiah's letter to the exiles. These are the words of the letter from that Jeremiah the prophet sent from Jerusalem to the surviving elders of the exiles and to the priests, the prophets, and all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had taken into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. This was after King Jeconia and the queen mother, the eunuchs, the officials of Judah and Jerusalem, the craftsmen, the metal workers, had departed from Jerusalem. Everybody had been taken into captivity by Nebuchadnezzar. The letter was sent by the hand of Elisiah, the son of Shaphan, and Gamariah, the son of Hilkiah, whom Zedekiah, king of Judah, sent to Babylon, to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. Whoo, that's a lot of names. It said, thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all the exiles whom I have sent into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon, build houses, live in them, plant gardens, eat their produce, take wives, have sons and daughters. Give your daughters in marriage that they may bear sons and daughters. Multiply there. Do not decrease, but seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile. And pray to the Lord on its behalf, for in its welfare you will find your welfare. Those are not the directions that someone gives when you're in a crisis situation and you go to the rescue, you know, hurricanes coming and you go to the rescue and if someone told you hey 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 just build a house here at the rescue plant a garden you know give your kids in marriage get married help the rescue become a thriving city what this is not my home that's what god is saying 
Let this become your home while you're here in exile away from your home because you're not going back anytime soon. God is letting them know this is where you're staying. This is what's going on. This is where you're going to be. And so get comfortable. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, do not let your prophets and your diviners who are among you deceive you and do not listen to the dreams they dream. For it is a lie that they are prophesying to you in my name. I did not send them, declares the Lord. Didn't send them. You're listening to the wrong message. You know, when someone's giving you a word, you should always be checking it against the word of God. It should coincide with what God's word is saying. Now, of course, they didn't have the Bible, but they had Jeremiah, who was a prophet of God. And if he didn't prove that he was a prophet of God by prophesying that Hananiah was going to die, I don't know what else proved that he was. So, you know, I would be listening to Jeremiah. He, he was a credible prophet. Here we go. For thus says the Lord, when 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will visit you. You're going to be there 70 years, he's telling them. Get comfortable. You're not coming back anytime soon. 70 years are completed for Babylon. I will visit you and I will fulfill to you my promise and bring you back to this place. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me and I will hear you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and I will restore your fortunes and gather you from all the nations and all the places where I have driven you, declares the Lord. And I will bring you back to the place from which I sent you into exile. Everybody quotes this verse, Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for your, for your, um, for your good. Plans for your good, right? Plans for your, Plans for your good and not for evil, to give you hope in a future. Everybody loves that verse, right? Have you ever taken it into the context of this is God pleading with his people? Guess what, hon? You guys are going into exile. Your guys are going to be slaves for 70 years before I'm going to come for you. Then I will call you and you will come and you will pray to me and I will hear you. God is telling them, hey, you're going to go through this hard time, but at the end of the hard time, I will be there. And I will be there through the hard time because I'm telling you you're going there. So people don't tend to remember that part of this verse, but that's what God's context is saying. You're going to go through a hard time. I have a plan and a purpose for this hard time, and I will see you through till the end. That's what that verse means. It's not all flowery and wonderful and that God's just going to give me a blessing at all times. That's not what the context is. God is saying there will come a time of hardship, but through that hardship, you will be blessed. All righty. So verse 14, I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and I will restore your fortunes and gather you from all the nations and all the places where I have driven you, declares the Lord. And I will bring you back to the place from which I sent you into exile. God is going to see them through, but they are going to go into a hard time. Because you have said the Lord has raised up prophets for us in Babylon, thus says the Lord concerning the king who sits on the throne of David and concerning all the people who dwell in the city, your kinsmen who did not go out with you into exile. Thus says the Lord of hosts, behold, I am sending on them sword, famine, pestilence, and I will make them like vile, vile figs that are so rotten they cannot be eaten god just has great word pictures right so this is just rotting fruit because there were people that didn't want to go into exile they didn't want to go into captivity obviously right so what did they do they ran they they hid they they did whatever they could to not go into exile and what is god saying well, because you didn't follow my direction and go into this hard time that I had put before you, now you're going to face the sword and famine and pestilence and be a rotten fruit. There you go. I don't know about you, but I think I would rather go into exile because the exile has a time limit and the sword and famine and pestilence does not. 
I will pursue them with a and God's going to pursue you with a sword and famine and pestilence and will make them a horror to all the kingdoms of the earth to be a curse, a terror, a hissing and a reproach among all the nations where I have driven them. If you haven't gotten a perfect word picture of what it's going to be like for you to not follow God's direction, there it is. God is telling us, you know, Yes, I'm sending you into a difficult circumstance, but the alternative is far worse than what I'm sending you into. It's like, this is right for me right now today. So, you know, we need to accept the hard times that God gives us because though we may think that is so awful, God is saying the alternative is way worse. Thank you, God. So, because they did not pay attention to my words, verse 19 declares the Lord that I persistent, persistently sent to you by my servants, the prophets, but you would not listen, declares the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord, all you exiles whom I sent away from Jerusalem to Babylon. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, concerning Ahab, the son of Kaliah, and Zedekiah, the son of Messiah, who are prophesying a lie to you in my name. Behold, I will deliver them into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and he will strike them down before your eyes. Because of them, this curse shall be used by all the exiles from Judah to ba in Babylon. The Lord make you like Zedekiah and Ahab, whom the king of Babylon roasted in the fire. Because they have done an outrageous thing in Israel. They have committed adultery with their neighbor's wives. They have spoken in my name lying words that I did not command them. I am the one who knows and I am witness, declares the Lord. Don't misrepresent God. Don't say God says this when God doesn't say that. Because God will, God will bring it about. God will... Well, obviously, God's going to knock you out, right? God's going to take care of it. So don't do not do that. Verse 24, Shemaiah's false prophecy. To Shemaiah of Nahaliam, you shall say, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, You have sent letters in your name to all the people who are in Jerusalem, and to Zephaniah, the son of Messiah, the priest, and to all the priests, saying, The Lord has made you priest instead of Jehoadiah, the priest, to have a charge in the house of the Lord over every madman, who prophesies, to put him in the stocks and neck irons. Now, why have you not rebuked Jeremiah of Ananoth, who is prophesying to you? For he is sent to us in Babylon, saying, Your exile will be long, build houses, and live in them, and plant gardens, and eat their produce. So now they're saying, this prophet is trying to say that Jeremiah is wrong, and that Jeremiah is is prophesying this and, and it's bad. It's not God's word, which again is a lie and he's a false prophet. So let's see what happens to him. Zephaniah the priest read this letter in the hearing of Jeremiah the prophet. Then the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. Send to all the exiles saying, thus says the Lord concerning Shemaiah of Nehelium. Because Shemaiah had prophesied to you when I did not send him and has made you trust a lie, Therefore, thus says the Lord, behold, I will punish Shemaiah of Nahaliam and his descendants. He shall not have anyone living among his, this people. He shall not see the good that I will do to my people, declares the Lord, for he has spoken rebellion against the Lord. Don't speak rebellion against God. Don't speak. God says, God thinks, well, you know, I have a word from God for you. You know, be careful because God knows what he says, and knows who he sends to say it. So make sure whatever you're saying is of God. And there you go. So now that ends our Old Testament reading. We're in our New Testament reading. 1 Timothy 1. Greeting. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by command of God our Savior and of Christ Jesus our hope, to Timothy, my true child in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord, warning against false teachers. So there's false teachers in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. Good morning, Catherine. Glad that you're here. As I urged you when I... Good morning, honey. Glad that you're here. As I urged you when I was going to Macedonia, remain at Ephesus so that you may charge certain persons not to teach any different doctrine, nor to devote themselves to myths and endless genealogies which promote speculation rather than stewardship from God that is by faith. This is, again... Um, 
Paul writing to Timothy. Paul is writing letters to the various churches, and he's giving this letter to Timothy as an encouragement and direction. So here we go. Um, from God that is by faith. The aim, verse 5 of our charge, is love that issues from a pure heart and a good conscience and sincere faith. Certain persons, by swerving from these, have wandered away into vain discussion, desiring to be teachers of the law without understanding either what they are saying or the things about which they make confident assertions. So make sure you know exactly what God's word is saying. How do you know what God's word is saying? By studying his word. So now we know that the law is good if one uses it lawfully. Understanding this, that the law is not laid down for the just, but for the lawless. And disobedient for the ungodly and sinners, for the unholy and profane, for those who strike their fathers and mothers, for murderers, the sexually immoral, men who practice homosexuality, enslavers, liars, perjurers, and whatever else is contrary to sound doctrine. In accordance with the gospel of the glory of the blessed God with which we have trusted. So that is who the law is for. The law is for those to understand they're breaking the law, right? So Christ Jesus came to save sinners. Who are, who are the sinners? We are the sinners. Even if we know and have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, we are a sinner. We are saved by grace, but nevertheless we sin and we fall short daily. And those that do not have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ are also sinners, but they have no personal relationship with Jesus Christ. So there's nowhere for them to go to find mediation between God and them. So verse 12, I thank him who has given me strength, Christ Jesus our Lord, because he judged me faithful, appointing me to his service, though formerly I was a blasphemer, a prosecutor, an insolent opponent. But I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am the foremost but I receive mercy for this reason that in me as the foremost Jesus Christ might display his perfect patience as an example to those who were to believe in him for ex eternal life to the king of ages immortal invisible good morning Danny to the king of ages immortal invisible the only God be honor and glory forever and ever amen Paul is hitting the nail on the head that is what we need to be doing, giving God glory and honor through all, any and all things. Good situations, bad situations, giving God glory. This charge I entrust to you, Timothy, my child, in accordance with the prophecies previously made about you, that by them you may wage the good warfare, holding faith as a good conscience. By rejecting this, some have made shipwreck of their faith. If we reject the good that God has done, we we damage our own faith. We 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 cause our own self to fall short, right? Among whom are Hymenaeus and Alexander, whom I have handed over to Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be named in the Bible as the people that have been handed over to Satan and have blasphemed. Yeah, I I don't I don't want to be that person. Don't be that person. Okay, Psalms 86, great is your steadfast love. So this is a prayer of David. The Psalms are all songs, and this is one that's from David. So verse 86, incline your ear, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. Preserve my life, for I am godly. Save your servant who trusts in you. You are my God. And David is not afraid to ask God to save him, even though he's the king. He knows and believes that God is in control. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for to you do I cry all the day. Gladden the soul of your servant, for to you, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. For you, O Lord, are good and forgiving, abounding in steadfast love to all who call upon you. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer. Listen to my plea for grace. In the day of my trouble, I call upon you, for you answer me. Do you see the, the, the pattern here is David is not about all about him, but God, right? But God. 
There is none like you among the gods, O Lord, nor are there any works like yours. All the nations you have made shall come and worship before you, O Lord, and glorify your name. For you are great and do wondrous things. You alone are God. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth and unite my heart to fear your name. This is where we find comfort, peace, hope, strength, foundation, refuge in God, right? You, it's all about God. I give thanks to you, O Lord, my God, with my whole heart, and I will glorify your name forever, for great is your steadfast love toward me. You have delivered my soul from the depths of Sheol, or hell. O God, insolent men have risen up against me. A band of ruthless men seeks my life, and they do not set you before them. But you, O Lord, are a God merciful and gracious slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. Turn to me, be gracious to me, give your strength to your servant and save the son of your maidservant. David is not saying it's not about me, it's all about you and I know you so you need to help me. So show me a sign of your favor that those who hate me may see and be put to shame because you, Lord, have helped me and comforted me. David is not saying any of this is something he can do anything about. David is saying, all this is in your hands, God. I trust you with it. And I, I'm asking that you see me through this. He's not asking that God take him out of this situation. He's asking for God to help him get through the situation, right? There's a difference. Okay, this is the last reading for today. This is Proverbs 25, 17. Let your foot be seldom in your neighbor's house. Lest he have his fill of you and hate you. There you go. That's, that's the wisdom of God left for you today. Don't be the busybody that's always over at somebody's house. And because um, they're going to get sick of you. Go figure. That's the direction of God. You, you can't make up this stuff. Like God's word is pertinent to every situation of life that you're in and I love that because that's the God I serve the God I serve is in any and every situation in my life and I can trust that he's gonna see me through and I can tell you that this reading for today was more for me than it was for anybody else but I hope that it did impact you and I hope that you were blessed by it if you have any prayers or comments feel free to share them um, please like please share the video and thanks so much for your time and I pray you have an excellent day God bless